Hey everyone, welcome back. Mike from MyTechie here, here to talk to you guys about the SQL Basics Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about basic SQL syntax. And the reason why I wrote basic SQL syntax in there is because a lot of stuff we're going to be covering today is normally universal throughout entire SQL. What I mean by that is Microsoft's not the only one to have a SQL engine. You also have MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, and many others. Now, SQL, it, the actual SQL syntax, an original SQL syntax that's compliant throughout the, all of them, is based on the compliancy of ANSI and ISO. If you don't know these compliancies, I highly recommend that you look them up and understand what is ANSI and what is ISO. So, with this being said, some people consider SQL to be a programming language, and some C people consider SQL to be a da uh, data manipulation language. Now, I want to clear things up here. Um, just as you know, politics has different views, so do people who do deal with coding. Now, people who consider SQL as a data manipulation language are normally programmers of a different language, such as PHP, ASP.NET, or another language, Drupal, Ruby on Rails. There's a lot of different languages out there that they, you can use to program an application that would include SQL within it. When you're doing that, a lot of people considered SQL to be a day manipulation language rather than a programming language. Now, a lot of database administrators consider SQL to be a programming language because that's all they do. When they're writing in SQL, they're writing in SQL. They're not writing, you know, a, a lot of different code. They're writing in SQL. Now, and the reason why I say that is because database administrators also know that there's not just SQL. There's Microsoft SQL and Microsoft has different functions and syntaxes that you can use that you can't use in Oracle or you can't use in MySQL and this is why a lot of SQL administrators my, or Microsoft SQL administrators or Oracle administrators or MySQL administrators actually consider SQL a programming language so with that out of the way we're gonna go ahead and continue on to what commands we're gonna cover today and what their use are in our system so today we're going to cover what is the use command and why do we use it. We're going to cover what does where do for us. We're also going to cover when to use and or or. We're also going to say what are aliases and why do we use them. Okay. We're also going to cover as any other programming language out there, whether it be again Ruby on Rails, PHP, Drupal. We're going to cover proper formatting. It's very important to format your code properly and format your syntax correctly in order for you to read it in a more standard format and easier in all honesty so with that being said let's get to work we're gonna go into our SQL database and you're gonna see that we have a standard thing here and I was actually doing a lot of testing before here so you can see that I have some error messages and I'm just going to rewrite what I have here and a lot of people go through uh, their days of writing SQL and they come up with their own forms that they use and their own schemas so to speak of why they use them now people who do things such as the Microsoft sample database where they write DBO and cells.lt Notice how none of their tables have a space in it. They're using what they call camel casing. And it's basically, they capitalize every letter of a new word. And the reason why they do this is so that they can get away with using that dot. Because in normal programming, in regular SQL, in my method, I would never use a dot when naming something. I would either use an underscore, a dash, or just simply not use it at all and just prefix everything with the name for example in this case sales LT because sales is the LT is the actual category of the tables that it's defining in this d database that's the reason why they have it and then they have dot now Microsoft's way of doing things is not incorrect it's just a different way of thinking about how to do programming you know, as you get into larger scale databases, um, 
you might not want to use something like this or it might even be better for you to use it it all depends on your actual environment and what you're actually going to be using it for so today we're going to be using the Microsoft uh, sample here so we're going to have to use the dot and you're going to see that we have select from sales LT dot product now what is select select is basically stating the fact that you're going to get data from a table so that's exactly what you're saying here I'm going to select in this case we're saying all fields and that's what's denoted by the asterisk is all fields we could say we're gonna get the color field and comma uh, along with the product category ID field now notice how we're getting a drop-down list of everything that's in that sales product ta LT product table this is what we call IntelliSense and IntelliSense is really helpful in, in SQL especially when you're starting out it helps you browse databases a lot faster tables understanding relationships between tables so on and so forth when you find a field that is what you want you can just simply hit tab and there it goes and you can just simply continue by putting comma in the next field you must have commas between your fields today we're gonna just go ahead and work with the asterisk to denote all fields now again we're gonna select a certain amount of fields from a certain table okay or a view if you're gonna be doing views and we'll explain views at a later video but today we're gonna go ahead and just execute this and notice how it works fine now why does it work fine the reason why this works okay is because a our syntax is correct and B because the database we're defining up here in this little drop-down is what we're running this query on no if I use the use command and I specify a different database let's say as such as the report server okay and I execute this notice how I get an invalid object name because sales the LT product does not exist in the report server database and we just basically switched it right on the fly when we hit the execute query and it allowed us to change the database and what the query that we're gonna be running is using on that database so again very helpful if you're gonna be writing something that's specific for one product or you're also using multiple different databases and switching between different queries based on something you're updating so with that being said we're gonna go and get rid of this and we can just simply go up here and define what database we're gonna use which is this AdventureWorks LT database and we're gonna go ahead and re-execute this and make sure that everything works okay which we can see it here it does now we have we have it here and we can see that you know sales asterisk from sales product LT now as you start getting into more we can say let's say your manager comes to you and says hey I want to know all our products that have a color of black let's say okay and you would have to define a condition which is what you would do with where you're gonna say where my sales LT dot product table okay dot the field that's in the product table in this case color is equal to and just like any other programming language you must encapsulate a string value within quotes in SQL not like Microsoft Access you must encapsulate it in single quotes okay not double quotes like you would see in Access that's incorrect you want these but notice how it turns to red denoting the fact that it is a string so here we're gonna go ahead and type in just black and we'll go ahead and hit execute okay. notice how everything that returns back in our result set is black okay so with that being said you can see that if you start getting more conditions out here this would look really ugly and this is where proper formatting comes into play okay so normally each time that you give a command such as select from where 
these things you want to put on a new line now this helps you out but let's say I wanted to say okay I want everything that is black but in product category 28 okay this is where your and or or operators come into play so we can say and sales LT dot product color or product dot product category ID is equal to 18 now why am I putting out the table and everything else here even when we already know what table we're in and I'm only doing this for proper habits and to get you guys into understanding hey you should always define a full or be explicit we should say if you want to use the proper terminology what table the field is coming from and in this case we're doing so we're saying hey we're in the sales LT object within the product table and we're going to get the field of product category ID where it's equal to uh, 28 I'm sorry and so we'll go ahead and select this and execute it and boom there it is we have things that products are black that are product category of 28 okay so you can see as you start getting over here we get longer and longer and longer with more conditions to filter out the data you can see that that can become monotonous as well this is where syntax comes in again for the proper formatting so what we do is after every operator such as and we go ahead and put it enter and we indent these things to be on the same plane as the other ones so this this will execute perfectly fine if I do that as well now the reason why we do this is to make your life easier because we know if we don't have an operator at the very end such as and or or down below we shouldn't see anything that should be the ending of our conditions so it makes it really quick and easy when you're scanning through things to be able to see the differences now I've copied and pasted I've actually pre-written some code here I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this and go copy the code I've written here and we're gonna read through it so notice how we have select everything from the sales LT product table where the sales LT product dot color is equal to black and the sales LT product product category D is equal to 18 or the sales LT product color is equal to red and the sales LT product category D is equal to 18 now notice that we have always our ands before our ors and we always have a and condition following an or condition when we're trying to do an or based on the same field confusing I know right now we're saying that we want to get black or red for category of 18 okay now notice I had to put category of 18 after each and condition and you have to do that because that's the way SQL is formatted and the way that it filters through the data now there is other ways to do it and a lot easier ways to do it but for your knowledge for right now we're gonna go ahead and just simply do it this way we're gonna go ahead and execute this query and you're gonna notice that we're gonna get black and red things in the product category of 18 now what if the boss wanted to be this thing to be ordered and you wanted to put this into an Excel sheet and he wanted it organized by the product color of black okay in that case what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come in here and you're gonna wanna say hey I can go to the very beginning and I'm gonna put order by sales LT dot product dot we want to order by the color and by default if you do this it will order by ascending now you can order it by descending if you want to but by default it's going to order it by ascending so let's go ahead and execute here and notice how we have black and then we have red so this is going to conclude our video tutorial for the basics of the SQL syntax. In a little bit, we're going to go ahead and follow up on the second part to discuss aliases. And that will be in part two.